I'm here with another tutorial video. Uh, my last video that I made was a tutorial on how to install the Glenn Schneider display shelf system. Uh, and you can click on the on the upper right hand corner of your screen if you uh, want to see that video on how I installed it. Uh, but before I get started I wanted to ask you guys uh, if you like the content that uh, that you guys are seeing with my videos I ask that uh, if you guys could subscribe I'm always looking for new subscribers and if you do subscribe be sure you click on the little bell icon uh, as the you'll get uh, notif you'll get uh, a notification every time I release a new video so uh, I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on weathering uh, bridge girders to look to go from this to this. So let's go. So this uh, bridge girder plate I bought this from Scenic Express and I'll put a link in the description below on where you guys can get this. Uh, it's a little bit pricey but it, it's got some good detail. It's got rivets on the bottom and on the sides and the, the real benefit with this, uh, the, with this girder plate is that it's flexible so that you can apply it to a curved bridge or a straight bridge. And this is the way it comes. It's like a flat gray and it's, it's meant to be weathered. So that's what we'll be doing today. And the things that I'll be using uh, to weather the, the, the plate is um, this is a silver paint. It's a tester's silver paint. And this is the, the, uh, the brush that, that I'll be using. And this is a pre-mixed brown wash. And this is a sealer that you put on after you're all finished. And I bought these things at a uh, local uh, hobby store. And then these are weathering powders that you apply with this, at this little applicator. It's almost like a makeup pad that you would use for makeup, but it's, it's really for uh, applicating. It's, for, it's like for, for using to applicate the... Um, the uh, weathering powders and this is the package that it came in. I bought the weathering powders and the uh, applicator pads at a train show. So uh, now we'll get started on uh, weathering the bridge. So what we're going to start off doing first is we're going to highlight the rivets on, on the bridge with this silver paint. And the way to do that is you want to dry brush the silver paint very lightly over the rivets and dry brushing for those of you who don't know what you do is you put paint on the brush and you take most of it off and you you basically barely have anything on the brush itself and then you just lightly go over the rivets with the brush to kind of accent them so I'll be doing that right now so I'll put a little paint on the brush and then I take it off Basically, I take most of the paint off. You really want the brush to be almost have no paint on it. And then you just lightly go over the rivets. You start at one end. And it, it's, it almost seems like you're not really you're not really doing much and it's just a very very light light application it's just to bring out the rivets to get them to kind of you know accent them a little bit more and I know it's it's hard on the camera the camera is not really gonna pick this up uh, you just have to look for yourself as you do it and you have to be a judge if, if you need more paint on the brush you put more on if you need less you take you take uh, you take uh, the paint off and you just kind of go over all the rivets and you'll see as you 
uh, lightly accent the rivets, you'll see them, they'll start to, to stand out a little bit and it'll really, it'll make it look, um, give it more of that three-dimensional look to it. And then sometimes I take the little bit of, if there's any leftover paint on the towel, the paper towel, I take a little bit off of there. If I think I need more, I take more from the bottle. But you, anytime you take the paint from the bottle, you always want to uh, take most of the paint off the paper towel. And that's why they call it dry brushing, because the, the uh, brush is pretty much dry when you're applying the, the paint. And I'm going to go ahead and get some paint off. Get the paint off. And go back. If it's too much, you can take some more off. And again, the camera is not really going to pick it up, but um, you can't really see it. But uh, I don't know if you can see that. It kind of picks up the it picks up the rivets. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of this bridge. Okay, I'm at the end here. Uh, I moved the camera a little bit so you could get a better view of the, the end. I'm just finishing up. Okay, so it looks pretty good. trying to I know it's hard to see but um, you can see where the silver is and so now the next step I'm gonna go ahead and do I'm gonna be doing the um, the the brown wash and um, I'll be using this right here but before I do that I gotta let the silver paint dry Okay, so now I let the silver paint dry. It's been a little over an hour. And so the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, wash, this brown wash. And it comes with its own paintbrush, but it's very, very small. The tip is very small. And what I like to do with it is I like to take the, the edges and just kind of let the paint, the wash run down the cracks and it just, you just let it run down the sides. And it bleeds because it's a, it's a, uh, it's a wash. It just runs down the, and it's, I know it's really hard to see on the camera, but uh, I just keep dipping the paintbrush and I just let the, gravity do its work and you're basically simulating rust that would run down the sides of the uh, the uh, the bridge and you go in the corners and you just let the paint run down and I'm constantly dipping the brush in the in the wash so that it can so it can run down the crevices I don't know if you can see that. See the brown? That's all. I just do it in the cracks and then I do it just on every, where every corner is.
I just touch the brush at the very top and let the let the paint just run down the sides. And what you're doing is you're just simulating rust that would run down over time. See how it's bleeding into all the crevices. You can you can darken the bottom part because that's where most of the water would uh, sit when it, the the bridge would be in the rain. And you can see the, the the paint is running down. And you just continue all the way down each square. Okay, I'm just finishing up here at the end. Doing the last panel here. Alrighty, so this is what we're looking at here. And you can see the, the rust is starting to you can see it, it's in the corners. And you can see it's starting, the bridge is starting to look more and more realistic. If you want to go back and after it dries, you want to touch it up, add more of the uh, brown wash, you can certainly do that to darken it up. But the uh, next step is to do the, uh, the uh, weathering powders. We're going to darken up. Uh, in between the ribs, add some more browns. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this, uh, this dry and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I let this dry, uh, the, uh, the brown wash, and you can see kind of what it looks like. It's just a little hint of brown around the edges. And we'll be darkening this darkening this up more with the uh, with the weathering powders. So the weathering powders um, a little bit goes a long way. And what you do is you just kind of dip this in here, just gently rub it on the pad and then you just lightly rub it on.
And then when you do it over the rivets, you, you kind of want to just dab it on. And you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to be, you can make it so it's varied in color to give it some variety if you want. It doesn't need to just be all a uniform color, but uh, that's, that's how, it, um, how we're going to get started. So I'll go ahead and do the rest and I will be back when I get to the end. Okay, so I finished doing the rest of the bridge and you can see here. Um, how it looks all the way down. And it's not quite finished yet. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the ribs on the top part need to be done next because it doesn't really look, uh, you know, that completely realistic. It's looking better, but it still needs to be, uh, the ribs on top need to be done. And you got to make sure when you do the panels, you want to do the bottom portion uh, right here, because this is where most of the rain is gonna is gonna pool up on the bridge, and so it'll. You want to make sure that that's um, the rustiest part down there on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and um, do the ribs next, and I will be right back. Okay, so I finished weathering the ribs, the outside, and you can see now it looks more uniform. Um, the other thing you want to do is do the top part, and then um, what I'm going to be doing is some accent colors kind of break it up and what you'll find is that when you put the brown on the weathering powder it's not going to be a uniform color it's going to be kind of you know uneven but that kind of gives it its uniqueness um, so I'll go ahead and um, do the top part and then I'll be back okay so uh, I found that the weathering powder for some reason is not adhering to the top of the the bridge here so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to doing the highlights and this is the uh, it's almost like a reddish you know uh, orange reddish brown and I just kind of do highlights just random highlights on the bridge just to kind of give it a little uniqueness you don't have to do it on every panel just on random ones. So when I'm finished, I'll be back. Okay, so I finished putting on the second highlight uh, the weathering powder. And here's a better view of it so what I'm gonna what you have to do now is you have to seal it all in with the spray lacquer so um, this is what I'm gonna be using 
made by testers. And what you do is you got to really shake the can for a good two minutes. That was that's what I was told. And um, what I'll do is you just do two coats. You just do two quick swipes over it. And what it does is it seals in the um, the uh, the weathering powders. So you just go quick. And then I'm going to do the top. Okay. And then um, I still need to do the top part. Hopefully I'll be able to get some um, weathering powder on there and I will be back. Okay, so this concludes the, uh, the video here. Um, what I ended up doing was I went back to the first girder plate that I did off camera uh, before and ended up darkening it up because it was so much lighter than the one that I did on in this video so I wanted them to match um, so um, my next video I think I'll be doing is an update on the uh, the progress of the Peabody Merrimack Valley I haven't done an update video in a while and I think it's overdue so uh, stay tuned for that in uh, the next couple weeks. We'll see you guys later.